Hi, I thought today we'd look at uh, how to set up a basic animation, the very basics from scratch uh, within view. So I'm going to just make this plane move across the screen. It's a very simple animation. What we're going to be focusing on <clears throat> is the timeline, etc. So first things first, let's start off by clicking the animation button. Click. Some of you will get uh, the animation wizard. Um, I don't like it to appear, so I just get rid of uh, display the wizard when creating new animation, and I just close that. So you can see the timelines appeared at the bottom of the screen. I guess the, the, the basic, most simple um, step that we take is defining how long that animation is going to last. Without dis defining a start and an end, we view doesn't know what's happening. There is no animation. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click on the timeline and I'm going to click on set animation end. Now for this, I'm just going to do five seconds. This is going to be an extremely slow moving plane um, because it's not going to take five seconds to go through our field of view in reality, but this is just a simple animation. What we're going to look at next is this little uh, rectangle down here. I'm going to right click on it and it's it's called keyframing. What a keyframe does is it defines the position, um, color, whatever it might be of the object at that moment in time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the item that we want to deal with and I'm going to move it out of shot because we want this plane to move across the screen. And again, we'll right click down here and you'll see I have auto keyframing set. So any changes I make, View will automatically put a keyframe in place. You can opt to do it manually, but at the moment we'll, because we're looking at the basics, we'll stick with auto keyframing. The next thing we want to do is define the behavior of this object. So I know at the beginning of my animation, the P51 is out of shot to the right hand side. But at the end of the animation, and I'm going to press this button here, which will move us to the end of the animation. I want that plane to have moved out of shot at the other side. Now you can see view has shown a line. That line is defining the path of the motion. If I want, I could move the slider. Let's go back to halfway through and I could move the plane over to the side. Now you'll see that view has calculated the path that the plane needs to move along. It's going to look a little bit odd and we'll show this just quickly by going back to the beginning of the animation. And we'll just press play and see what happens. Now you can see the plane is moving, but it's not moving correctly. Let's do that again. You can see here the plane has moved. Okay, so basically it's remaining facing straight ahead. We can go back to the beginning and we can tweak that by just rotating the plane. So it's following the line. And then by using the button immediately to the right of the play button, we can go to the next keyframe. We can rotate the plane again so that it's more or less at a tangent to the curve at that point. And then we'll go to the end of the animation and we know that the plane needs to be rotated. What View is doing as we go is View is, is making an intelligent uh, decision to alter these keyframes. So consequently, if we go back to the beginning and we press play, the plane is now turning. Now this will become more apparent if I go back to the beginning. Always remember that if we're going to move the sun or we're going to move the camera and we don't want those to be animated, re remember to return to the beginning of the animation. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate the camera. Well, I'm going to raise it and I'm going to look down and let's just see what difference that's made to the animation. Let's press play. In comes the plane. 
The plane is turning not tremendously well at this moment, but that will take further refinement. Let's go back to the plane and we'll go to the keyframe because as it's turning, it may rotate, i.e. it will bank. Okay, so let's go back again. View will have recognized the fact that we've put a bank in at this point. So between this position where it's horizontal and this position, the plane will gradually turn and then turn back to horizontal because that's where these two keyframes, the beginning and the end, have the plane at horizontal. So we can press play. Oops, sorry, I went to the next keyframe. Let's press play. So the plane's coming in, it's banking, and then it's going back to horizontal. <clears throat> this does not need to be output as a an animation. I'm just going to go back to the, the middle frame because I want the camera at that position to put the plane in the middle. So again, the camera should now be animated and you'll see it's got a keyframe there. We'll go to the end. There is no end for the camera. So we'll just go back to our P51 and we'll press play. So you'll see now the camera is moving to follow the plane. So going back right to our very beginning. Oh, and by the way, an interesting point. If you want to start all over again and you don't want to carry on editing, we can right click on the timeline once we have the plane or the animated component selected and we can destroy its animation. Again, with the camera, let's destroy its animation. We don't want it animated. So from the beginning, the first and single most important thing is to define where you want the animation to end. At the moment, it's only one frame. It's not moving. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to set the animation end. And again, this is entirely up to you. If I make the end one second, it'll take a second from the plane to get from this side of the screen to this side of the sc screen, a much faster moving aircraft. But for these purposes, so we can see what we're doing, I'll just make it five seconds. So remember, at the moment, we just want to right click and view because I've destroyed its animation it's forgotten that initial keyframe so I'm just going to add a keyframe to all properties that means view will remember this the position of this plane we'll go to the end and I know at the end I want the plane over here then what we did we went to the middle of the animation and we decided we wanted to move the plane and we rotated the plane to a tangent. Let's go to the end. Let's rotate the plane again. As we're going, view is intelligently putting placeholders in those keyframes, which are going to lock it to that position, orientation, etc. We can go to the middle of the keyframe, uh, and we can, or the middle of the timeline, and we can make the plane bank. And we can go back to the beginning, and we can press play. And here comes our plane, it's banking, and it's moving away. So, I hope you found that useful. It's a very simple process, setting up the animation. Animating objects themselves can be quite tricky. Um, one thing I was going to say was remember that initially, at zero, we only had one frame. So if you render, all you'd get would be this shadow. I can render at any time on this animation simply by moving to where I want the animation to be, maybe adjusting the camera angle and pressing render. So it will render that frame. I hope you found that useful. Please give us some feedback on social media and on YouTube. Um, thanks for watching. Bye bye.